Okay, my name is Krzysiek Drusz, and I will be speaking today about updates. Um, it will be rather hard presentation uh, with a lot, lot of technical stuff. So don't worry, you don't have to remember everything that you will see today. Uh, the slides will be online, so you can always go to go through them later on, or you know. Uh, who am I? Uh, my name is Krzysiek Drusz, not Jana Malishova. <laughs> uh, I'm the owner of WP Magus. It's a software house where I uh, develop websites and so on. Uh, I'm, I'm also working, doing some stuff for uh, Word, WordPress itself. For example, I'm con core contributor. I'm also a translation contributor. Uh, I've organized two word camps in Poland. Uh, I'm also speaker at word camps, for example, something like seven or eight for now. Uh, I'm organizing Word Up Wrocław. It's a local uh, event for local uh, community of WordPress. Uh, you may know me if you use WordPress Stack Exchange. I'm a moderator in there. And I've done some work for Prochnik, Skalmet, or uh, Polish Ministry of Education. So, yeah. Uh, updates. We all know this screen, right? Uh, you okay? So, one question for the for you: Are you developers, bloggers? How do you use WordPress? Do you use WordPress at all? <laughs> okay. So maybe th th this way. Uh, if you are a developer, hand in the air. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's wake up. Great. So, we all know this screen, but have you ever think about where does it come from? I mean, not the, the screen, but this part, right? This yellow part that says that there is a new version of, of of a plugin. Well, from my experience, not many people ask this question. It just it is at it, it, it is, right? <clears throat> so, uh, first thing, WordPress sends a request to a server. Which server? It is a WordPress server which holds a WordPress plugin repository, right? This is the server that is storing the info about updates. How does it how the, how does it send this request? Using Cron. Cron. When I'm when I'm saying Cron, I mean of course the WordPress call, WordPress Cron, so WP scheduler, right? The same, uh, the same tool that is used for publishing uh, future posts and so on and so on. Okay, <clears throat> so how does it send it? Uh, and how often? So first of all, WordPress send, when I mean sends, it, it uses uh, HTTP API, right? So WP remote post and so on, uh, and it's, it's sent every 12 hours, so twice a day, right? So if there is a new update, then you will know about it uh, after 12 hours at the worst case, right? <clears throat> uh, and these are the events, event names, uh, that are used for a WordPress cron, right? So. WP version check. This is the event for uh, checking the version of WordPress itself, core version. Uh, WP update plugins. This is the event for checking if there are new versions for plugins. And WP update teams. This is the event for checking if there are new version of teams. Uh, okay. And how? What next, right? So, uh, <clears throat> there are three functions in 
WP includes dash uh, update slash update, right? Uh, the first ver first function is WP version check. The name is the same as the uh, event, right? So it's easy to find. WP update plugins and WP update teams. These are the three functions that are used for checking the uh, the info about uh, update, right? Uh, all of the all of these functions are documented, so you can read more about uh, more about those vers those uh, functions. And here are the uh, URLs that are sent uh, by those functions, right? So WP version check uses asks API WordPress org slash core slash version check slash 1.7, right? So if you want to know the newest version of WordPress, you can always go there. And there's the information about the newest version. Uh, if you want to know newest version uh, for plugins, you can ask this endpoint. Of course, you have to send some data to, the, to it, right? Okay. Notice, and it's important, these functions have some plug have some uh, hooks in their in their code, right? Because um, all of these requests are sent with HTTP API. It means that we can use uh, this uh, this and this uh, filter, right? So HTTP request args. This filter we can use to modify the arts that are sent to the, the server. And uh, HTTP response, this is the filter that is run just before returning the response, right? So we get the response, then fire this hook, and then do something with the response, right? So for example, we can delete all the response content. Right, so no updates will be sent. Uh, and of course, uh, there's an action, HTTP API debug, so we can debug and log and so on. Okay, <clears throat> and then what? We have the info about the uh, newest version. What then? We have to display it in the, in the dashboard, right? So the response is stored in the, as a transient. Do you know transients? Yeah, yeah of course. Great. Uh, transients are uh, some options that are valid only for some time. Okay, so for example, we say that this option should be stored only for, should be valid only for one day. After that one day, uh, we won't get the value. Okay, it, it's invalid, so we have to uh, get it one more time. Okay. So the response from the server is stored as a transient, uh, so it can be displayed without uh, sending the request all the time. And these are the names of the transients. Update core, this is the info about uh, core, update plugins, and update teams. And once again, this part is boring, right, because Okay, those are the names, and so what? Well, it's not so boring because if there are, if these are transients, and we know their name, we again can use some filters to modify it. Okay, and these are the filters: preset transient and transient name. This filter allows us to modify the transient, the value of the transient just before it is stored in the database. Okay, so we get the answer from the server, response from the server, we can modify it and store in database the modified version, okay? And transient uh, underscore transient name, this is the filter that is fired every time the transient is checked. So every time when you check what's the value of the transient, this, this filter will be fired and return returned the value, right? So we can modify, we can store 
original value, but modify every time we want to, right? Okay. <coughs> this is the boring part, because uh, now I will show you some parts of WordPress code itself. Uh, how does it look? You know, the story that I've told you already, how does it look in the code? Uh, you don't have to remember it, so just, you know, you may go to sleep for five minutes or, five minutes or so. Uh, okay, so this is the function WP version check. I've already told you about this function. As you can see, it's, it takes some uh, parameters, but the, they are not important for us. And what that, does it do? Well, first of, first of all, it takes current knowledge about updates, right? It, it checks the transient. Uh, it checks some translation and so on and so on and so on. Uh, then it checks is if the check is if it's a force check, right? If if it is, then it always will be checked and not ignored. Mm. Here are the locales for your site. Uh, here's checking if when it was last checked and so on and so on and so on. Uh, some checking if it's a multi-site or normal site, right? Here is the query. So as you can see, there is a version PHP, locale, MySQL, uh, local package blocks, users, multi-site enabled, initial DB version. What does it mean? All those value values will be sent to the server, WordPress server. So these are the usage statistics of your site, okay? they are sent to the server, so WordPress knows it. Um, here is the filter that allows you to uh, modify the parameters that will be sent. Uh, yeah. Here is the URL. I've already showed you this URL, right? This is the uh, address that will be uh, respond, responding to our uh, our request. Here is checking if we're using SSL um, and so on. And here is the WP remote post, right? So this is the function used that is sending the request to the server, waiting for the response. Um, yeah. Here we're checking some errors and so on and so on. Then are some, a lot of info more. And as you can see, here is the set site transient update core updates. Updates is the uh, object that contains all the data about new new version. Right, and there are some more stuff done later. Uh, <clears throat> here's the WP update plugins, and it's more or less the same code. So I won't go through uh, this this part. As you can see, it's almost the same. It just goes and goes and goes. <clears throat> okay, and there is uh, also WP update teams. Again, the same code. Requests. So what data is sent to the server and how does the response look like? Okay, this is the, this is the important thing because uh, this describes what WordPress server knows about our site and what we can learn from the server. This is the request, um, the content of the request that is sent to plugins update check, okay? So this is the data that is sent to the plugin repository just to check 
what are the newest, newest versions for our site. And as you can see, here is the uh, body of the request, plugins. Uh, and here, is, here goes the list of plugins that is used on our site. What is important is that, as you can see, Contact Form 7 is the plugin you all know, I guess, right? But WP Magus FAQ, mm, it's not a plugin from repository. It's my custom plugin. But my WordPress sends info about this plugin to the plugin repository just to check if there's a new version for that plugin. Okay? And all the info is sent. So, you know, name, plugin URI, version, description, and so on, and so on, and so on. Uh, okay? Uh, there's also information about which plugins are active. So if you, if you go to the plugin repository and there is an, an info that saying uh, how many active installations a given plugin has, right? So for example, Contact Form 7 has, I don't know, one million installations active, right? So this is where WordPress knows how many. Because your site twice a day notices WordPress plugin repository which plugins are you using, okay? And also there's uh, info about uh, translations that your site is using, okay? Here's the response, and as you can see, again, there is a plugins, right? Uh, Array, that, is, that contains information about newest version of, of plugins, right? So uh, WordPress SEO, uh, here is the ID of the plugin, Slack plugin, uh, new version, so you know that the newest version is 11.3. Uh, here is the package. This, this is the URL to the package, package with new, new version of the plugin, right? So if you go to that link, you will get the zip package for the plugin. Uh, here are the icons, banners, and so on and so on. Uh, and there is also uh, translations array and no update. This is the list of plugins that doesn't have newest version. So there's no update for them for now, right? Okay. Again, teams, almost the same uh, case, right? So there's an array with teams, 2017, 2019, uh, active is 2017, right? And again, the response, uh, Team 2017, there's new new version and so on and so on. Right. <coughs> so, okay, this was the part that we were checking how WordPress checks the new, new versions and what data is sent and what data is get from the server, right? So if we're already wiretapping and listening and checking our WordPress, do you know where this come from? you know, all that information. You know, when you're on the plugin screen, you click more, more info about the plugin, right? And there's this screen, your cell, the banner, the description, and so on and so on. Anybody? Well, it's from the WordPress repository. Yeah, yeah, it's from WordPress repository. Uh, here's the uh, response you get from the WordPress repository. And here is the request you're sending, right? So if you want to check the newest version and get the data about, I don't know, contact form seven, then you have to go to API WordPress org slash plugins slash info slash 1.2. This is the uh, API version slash action plugin information request, uh, blah, 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 Slack WordPress SEO. So for example, Slack, Contact Form 7, right? Locale PLPL, because I was checking for Polish version of the uh, description. And here is the response, right? So you're getting the name of the plugin and, and so on and so on. You can always get, you can also get 
rating of the plugin, uh, how many support threads are on the forum, uh, what else, active installs, the number of the active installs, uh, last updated, and so on. So it's pretty nice info, right? And you get it in JSON format, so it's easy to parse. Okay. There are also, as you can see, links to all, well, not all, but to all the versions of the plugin. So, for example, if you uh, updated some plugin and you have problems, you can also downgrade by going to the link like that, downloading the plugin and replacing the files. Okay. <clears throat> so, what happens when we click update? We have all the info, we have seen the notice, we push update. Well, an instance of one of these classes in, is constructed. This, there are three classes, four classes that WordPress uses. Core upgrader, plugin upgrader, team upgrader, and language pack upgrader. Uh, again, all of these classes are well documented in the uh, codex, so we can check it later on. The important thing for, for us, for now, is that all of these classes are using pre-auto-update and upgrader pre-download and upgrader process completed filters and much, much more. Okay, so we can hook our code in there. Okay, so this was the boring part. So how can we use this knowledge? Okay, so we spent around 15 minutes uh, listening some boring, boring technical stuff about how WordPress does it. But what now? Well, this wasn't useless, okay? You can really use this for, for your pro, um, projects. For example, <clears throat> one of the um, applications is you can hide some or, or all update notices, okay? How? Well, as I've shown, you can modify the response from the plugin repository, right? So if you write some code, uh, use the hook, for example, preset transient, some pre transient set, right? Then you can modify the response. So you can empty the response, so no updates will be shown. This is one usage. <coughs> I don't recommend it. This is the part I might recommend. Notify users, but prevent them from doing updates. So if you go to the dashboard, you will see there is a new version of contact form, of contact form 7, but you won't be able to click update. Why? Because, for example, mm, I'm doing maintenance for the site, and the, the site has many users that are just using this site, right? And there is some uh, guy or girl in the you know, office that always wants to click everything, right? So this is the way. She will, she, he will know that there is a new version. He can call me and say, hey, we have to update this plugin. But he won't be able to click it himself. How? Well, it's pretty easy. All you have to do is to use, again, uh, the filter to setting transient and delete the information about the URL of the package. If the uh, plugin info won't have that URL, it will show that there is a new version, but it won't show the update plugin because it's enabled to update, right? And uh, we, we can use preset transient filter. This will allow us to modify the information in the database, right? But we can use also transient transient name filter. This will allow us to modify this value every time it's read, right? So for example, we can check who, which user is logged in. So for example, we can show if I am logged in, the button will be shown. But for example, if Peter is logged in, 
the information won't be shown. He won't see the button, right? Another usage, uh, allow updates for custom plugins teams. How? Well, you can also hook to the uh, preset transient, send your request to your own server, get the same response that WordPress plugin repository is sending, and show that there is a new version of your custom plugin that is not in the WordPress repository, right? Well, another usage, look who updates what and when. So for example, if, if Peter is clicking update, then we know that Peter is the person who, who we have to blame for the not working side, right? Okay, uh, any other ideas? Come on. What else would you like to do with updating, uh, with the knowledge you get today, you've got today? <coughs> Come on. Okay, maybe later. Last part, problems, and tricks, and so on. Anything we should be careful about. May this cause any, this way of doing it, cause any problems? Can you think of some problems that may occur during the update and how it works? The main problem is name conflicts. Because as you've seen earlier on, um, even custom plugins are sent to the plugin repository, right? So for example, let, let me say it this way. Let's say I wrote a custom plugin that's called Hello Dolly. What will happen? WordPress will send the request to the plugin repository. Hey, is, my, this site is using Hello Dolly plugin. What's the newest version of that plugin? WordPress repository knows a plugin that's called Hello Dolly. So it will respond. Well, the newest version is 10.1. 10 10 WordPress will say, okay, I have version 1.0. So I have to update. If you click update, what will happen? Your custom plugin will be deleted and replaced with the plugin from repository, right? So you have to be very careful when you write your own plugins and teams, you have to be very careful, careful how do you name them, right? Because the name conflicts is, is pretty dangerous because it may be overwritten, uh, but of course you can prevent it from happening. How? Again, you can check, you know, you know that this site is using this plugin, right? And it's a custom plugin. So you can use all the filters and so on to make sure that WordPress repository won't know, won't get the request for the newest version for the, the, your custom plugin and even if WordPress repository will send any information about that, that plugin, you can ignore it, right? So no update will happen, right? Okay, so that's all, thanks. Niekto má nejakú otázku? Any questions, please? Yeah, don't be afraid, I don't bite. Sorry, so your pre presentation will be available online? Yeah, yeah it, will be, it will be published online. I will send it to, well, I've already done, so you, you may publish it, the link to, the, to it to, on the Facebook fan page or whatever. Yeah, and, and the video, it will be on uh, WordPress TV. Maybe uh, what process or strategy do you recommend for testing the latest version of the plugin or theme 
Do you have a separate information of WordPress where you send these things? Or? Yes, always. At least I always try to, right? Because the worst thing in the world is that you do update, the site crashes, and then you have it's Friday evening, and then you know the owner of the site is calling and he's calling you names and he's angry and you don't want it, right? So, <laughs> yeah. Well, I always check the code differences between versions. So I have all the sites in the Git repository. So when I do update, I can always check what are the differences between the, those two versions and try to check what they do. Okay, so, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's not easy. Uh, some time ago, there was uh, some software called Perfect Dashboard. Uh, they've been sold this year, I guess, so I'm afraid they, they are not available for now. But it allowed you to do the update for the remote side, something like the WP Manager or something like that, and it was doing some automatic checks how the site looks looked before and how it looks after the update. So you had image before, after, and if the images were different, then you could check what's the difference, right? So you know that ah, this button is deleted or something like that. Okay, I think okay. no more crash questions, so thank you. Thank you very much.